Hello to everyone, we are going to perform a first experiment on digital signal processing. The experiment is on the sampling theorem. We are going to prove it. Uh, now, what is sampling theorem? This is very important. Sampling theorem states that any analog signal can be represented in the uh, sample version and can be recovered from it if the sampling frequency fs is greater than or equal to twice the modulating frequency. That modulating frequency. Okay. So now we are having three conditions. Well, now first condition is there where the fs is less than twice of fm. fs is equal to twice of fm. And third condition is fs is greater than twice of fm. So before we proceed, let's write some basic command CLC to clear command window clear all close all. Now we require two frequency, modulating frequency and the sampling frequency. To make it easy, I'm going to assume them. FM equal to one kilohertz. Okay. To write a command, we have modulus sign one kilohertz. Okay. Now I'm going to take three frequencies, sampling frequencies, FS1, which will be equal to twice of FM, twice of FM. And second sampling frequency equal to 1.2 times of FM and third frequency is equal to thrice of FM. It means we have taken all the three conditions where sampling frequency is less than twice of WM and greater than and equal to. Okay. Now I'm going to plot the graph for all these functions. Before that, I have to take a one input sine wave so let's take it x equal to sine uh, sine 2 cross pi 2 pi fmt this is an input analog signal this is an input analog signal okay now i'm going to uh, sample the signal in order to sample the signal we replace fm by n by fs so we will get a sample version. Why is a sample version? We get it like this: sin equal to two cross pi cross fm cross n divided by fs. This is a sample version. Here we have to give certain range for t as well as n. So giving it for t and n, t is equal to start from zero. And having an interval of 0 0.01 uh, to 1. Okay, similarly, we will take an index for n to represent a discrete signal. We start from minus 1 with an interval of 0.1 to 1. We can take it at any value, but it should be suitable to represent the graph. Now we are going to plot these signals. We are having three total signals, so we are going to divide this plane into four parts. We'll use subplot command subplot 2, comma 2, the first one. Okay, now we are going to draw. Uh, first of all, we are going to draw the main analog signal. We will use plot command to draw main analog signal x comma we are going to draw the main uh, also in x axis we have a time in y axis we have a uh, value of x t now we will plot three different signal for three different value of fs so this will be the discrete signal make a copy zero plus v so zero plus v for sampling frequency one for two and for three these are the digital signal for three different frequencies. Two. And this one is the third one. Now I am going to plot all these values or so we can say graph. So plus two, two, two. Uh, in order to plot a digital signal, I will use stem. Stem. N comma y1. So, CDR plus V. 
again see here of plus v this will be the third plot this will be the fourth plot for sampling frequency fs3 and comma y2 and, and comma y3 and comma y3 this one is the last one now we have plotted all the signals here this is the first one this one second this one third this one fourth now i'm going to run it so here we can see we got the output this is the original continuous analog signal this one is a discrete signal for sampling frequency twice fm it is less than twice fm it is for thrice of fm so we have proof sampling theorem now i am going to show some extra feature in that now what are those sorry uh, here for this we can see uh, some another thing like we can use stem hold on stem and comma y2 hold on hold on this hold on is used to hold the uh, previously uh, come output here yeah, the output of stem is the previous output so it will hold this value and along with that value it will plot the next value to that that is the plot value similarly we will do it for another uh, few things like for this stem and comma y3 hold on hold on okay we have done it for this stem and comma y1 hold on hold on plot and comma y1 so now we are going to run it again let's see so finally we got a this great output which we really want okay thanks for watching this video